Uh, it's 407. We'll call a meeting of the Berlin Council on Aging Board in session. Um, I'll call the roll. Karen Schultz. Here. Rachel Boyer. Here. Lori Fairbay. Mm -hmm. Not here. Kate Bliss. Mm -hmm. Pat Wheeler. Here. Bob Blair. Here. Okay. Anybody else with us? Chris Keefe in? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Victoria Flynn's. Anyone seen her? I'm nope. here. No, I'm here. Okay. Well. It'd be a very boring meeting if I wasn't, I guess. So. How do you pronounce your husband's last name? Sankaran? Correct. Yep. Sankaran. Interesting. Nice. Good job. You get five points. They mean nothing, but you get points. It's all those years I lived in India that did it. Um, okay. So first item on the agenda is uh, reading and approving the minutes or reviewing and approving the minute. Okay, from the last meet and will to approve them. Anybody want to? Okay, hearing no. Oh, motion to motion. Or... Oh. oh, motion to approve the minutes from May. And okay. I'll second. Uh, all, the, all those. Oh, I'm glad for the second. All those in <laughs> favor? Karen Schultz. Aye. Rachel Boyer. Aye. Pat Wheeler. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bob Blair. Okay. I, we, they. Very good. All right. Uh, fiscal updates, please. Donations, expenses, part time, and director wages. All right. Uh, part time wages are $1,227.41. Director wages are $2,580.24. Expenses are $2,299.71. And then donations are an even 305. And our expenses went for? Well, 1,200 of that was grab and go. There you go. Yeah. And the rest was inflating um, the tires uh, on the van again or something? Um, no, that, so that's separate. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Um, but we did get some invoices from yoga as well. So I think that was about 400 and then the rest of it, you know, between gas and anything else that we've had. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? I don't think we need to, uh, approve the, why did that just go away? Excuse me. My phone is being wise. Smarten up your phone. You can be replaced, you know. Oh, just was replaced. Um, goody. Tai Chi, yoga, and the ever-loving van. Uh, tai Chi and yoga are still going, as always. Um, they will be continuing on throughout the summer. Um, Sharon, the yoga instructor, had a, a suggestion Um She's normally teaching two classes on Saturdays. She does a regular yoga and then a chair yoga at 1015. And the chair yoga at 1015 has had at most, I think two people in a class for a while. And it's, it's really now dropping off even more. And she is currently- um, Goes down to one and a half people now. Exactly. Um, she has recently gotten uh, certified for basically another certification where it talks about like, overall like well-being, um, physical fitness for seniors. And she has suggested to see if we can have that replace chair yoga at 1015. Um, I told her I didn't think it was a bad idea. I just wanted to talk to the council about it. Um, she's willing to trial it during the summer um, and see if we can get the attendance up for it. So what is the certification in? I believe it is called, um, it's either like wise or size or something like that. I can get you guys the specifics, but oh. it's basically like, it talks a lot about like stability, like, and just overall, like mindfulness yeah. and like healthy, you know, basically like healthy calisthenics and healthy, uh, like mindfulness type of stuff for seniors specifically. So she did offer it up. Um, she said that for that class, she charged $25 per class, which isn't really much of anything. Um, we should be able to manage it financially for next fiscal year, but I told her I'm, I'm willing to give it per person. 
the class. Uh, oh, so we would just go there. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, so when people that take these Tai Chi and yoga, do they pay? Yes. Whatever they can or do they? they so we have a suggested donation of $2 per $2. class and people pay it. Okay. We, I never have to really worry about people not paying. They always do. Not for two bucks. <laughs> wow. So are this new class, is it going to be done in chairs? Can we sort of combine the two or somehow? So my suggestion to her was going to be is if we liked the idea of the set, the 45 minute other class being, you know, this new mode, we can have some chair elements be put into the regular yoga as well. So that way, like it's, it's going to be a nice mix. And I think people will be fine with that. Yeah. I mean, what is the, what's the difference between, well, obviously they're sitting in the chair somehow. Yeah. Regular yoga. She does like some works on mat. She'll do some work, a lot of like standing work, a lot of bending, but chair yoga, because people tend to have more limited um, capacities. A lot of it is like focused on arms, upper body and breathing, particularly while sitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. But some of the, I know the one in Northville, you can stand behind your chair exactly. and, and, and do what you can do. Exactly. And she or modifies. Sit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So and she, yeah, yes, and she, yeah. she modifies her classes too. And she, she tells people all the time, like, do what you can, like, this is not a competition. You know, That's she, you she does, you know, a couple different variations as well for people. What are these classes on Saturday? Saturday mornings. Right? Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of the girls at the uh, village have asked me. Yep. Yoga Saturday. Yep. When's Tai Chi? Tuesday afternoons. Yeah, so. And the Tai Chi is what days? Tuesday afternoons. So the Saturday one, she was doing a regular yoga and then a chair yoga yeah. after it? Yeah. Oh, okay. What time on Saturday morning does she come? Start at nine. Nine o'clock? Yeah, nine to 11. Oh, it's two hours. Tai Chi also focuses oh. on balance yeah. and. Yep. I'm going to try Saturday. So, I mean, I, I think it's worth trying, especially like we can even try just during the summer, get some, drum up some feedback for it. And, you know, if people aren't a big fan of it, then that's fine. But I, I think it's something worth pursuing. It's a little different. I think I, yeah, um, I agree with you. Mix it up a little. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think when they have the stability of the chair being available, yeah, they can hold on because that's exactly. what they do. Where is it? Is it here? Is it here? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, they do it here. Yeah, that's what I thought. I came up the other day and the, one of the classes, there was a sign out in the door that was canceled. Yeah, Tai Chi. Yeah. Yeah. Because we had, yeah, our instructor was sick last week, I think. So. so. Things in that regard is sort of Tai Chi and Tai Chi and go. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, zooming right along. So um, what's up with the ban? So um, I believe that we have finally resolved the issues of the van. Um, Good. It, long story short, we wound up having to go to Acton Ford because we reached out to Wheeler's Garage and to Berlin Auto and they were just swamped. They could not take the van in for service. Um, we brought the van into Acton Ford last week. Um, it was at a commission for three days, but what they figured out was that we had these two um, sensors that kept going off, like EVAP codes that kept going off. Yep. And Colonial thought that it was just bad sensors. Acton figured out, no, the sensors are working. It was a liner between the gas tank and the engine, which was actually full of holes, had holes in it. And that needed to be replaced. A liner? There's a liner, I guess there's like, it's built in as part of like the gas tank. And I guess it connects down from the gas tank down because it helps with like fumes and making sure that that gas that like the fume of gas does not go throughout the vehicle itself. But there was yeah. a liner that apparently needed to be replaced. And that's why those sensors kept going off. Oh, so it's so been the, replaced? It has been replaced. But the sensors off? The sensors are good as of now, no issues. Um, and then we had to get a tail light replaced because the casing cracked and it would fail inspection as well. So that that work was done, um, it has been paid. It was more than what was budgeted, um, more than what budgeted for it. So the money to pay for it came out of formula grant. 
hail light was cracked? What was it hailstone or what? No, no, no. It was a, the casing cracked. When um, one of the drivers came back from grocery shopping, they noticed that it was cracked. So I don't know, like if a, a you know, like a grocery cart hit it, if somebody opened up a door and cracked, I don't know. Um, but they let me know and we got that replaced as well. So the van is going tomorrow to be inspected after runs. So mm. pass, but um, yeah, so the van, like I said, everything in the van now should be good. Um, the service was $1,163. <sighs> so that's why I came out of Formula Grant. Kawabunga. Did they... Did they use, do you say that the, oh, uh, so it's, okay, I know what you're saying. So that obviously included some parts. Yep. Like expensive parts, evidently. Unfortunately, well, the liner, like they were able to get parts actually pretty quickly. They got it within about a day or so. The only problem was, is there was a delay in one part. They were waiting for it to be shipped and waiting for it to come in. They thought it was going to come in earlier in the day. It came in as they were closing, I guess, or towards like the end of the day. So they couldn't do it. And then with, between that and the labor, it just was a more expensive service, unfortunately. But who knew that who knew that Fords could be so expensive? They're not, they're not even affordable. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, I will say that Acton Ford was pretty was very good, like they were very responsive. They were giving us updates and um, unfortunately because the van didn't get finished until late Friday morning um, and we picked it up Friday afternoon. Um, we did have to cancel a ride that we had scheduled for Friday morning, but I had kept that person aware of what was going on um, during the service. So they were able to make alternate um, transportation. So they kept giving you updates like now your bill is $600. Now your bill is $850. Yeah, they, uh, they, they had let me know that they were quoting 12. Um, so I was able to figure out and I had you know talked to Kate and uh, like I said, we were able to figure out to how to get it paid. So it's all set. Yeah. Whoopee. And does anybody still have on, on the radar to check the undercoating before winter comes? What we want to do is um, I'm also looking into two for tires just because like, you know, the van does have six tires, I believe. So it, they get used a bit more frequently. Um, it's got so six? I believe so. Give me on it? Yeah. It's got two and two. It doesn't have dualies in the back. I thought it did. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. So I was going to um, start pricing out for tires as well. So um, Acton uh, did a multi-point inspection and there was nothing that they noticed anything on the undercoat that was wrong, but we can certainly talk to them. Now that I can, now that I, we, we know that we can trust their work, I'm sure if we needed to do any kind of like coating protective spray <coughs> on the undercarriage, um, I can get a quote for that and we can budget it out. Okay. Compare it to the one we did before the first time, because that was up in Sterling or something. Yeah. That there did it. yeah it was before it was before we got the before it became used for right right before it was put in service yep coa ongoings so just to give you guys just general updates of what's been going on here um we obviously had the grab and go it was successful um we had 75 meals ordered um again 90% of the comments have been, you know, overall favorable. So um, yes. yes. Um, and then, you know, they have been um, good to go. Um, and then I had a fraud prevention uh, seminar a couple weeks ago. There's a write-up about that in the powder house. We did another seminar with Vitas Healthcare. Um, they are a healthcare agency based out in the Braintree area. And then they're trying to expand West towards central and western mass um, vitas v-i-t-a-s yeah um and then as of right now um a lot of my time has been spent on the shine trainings um so i am pending test and then once i pass the test and get certified i can f officially be the shine counselor for the town um starting for open enrollment in um october you can let your little light shine so to speak Much. Um, so that'll be a, that'll be a, I, it'll probably wind up being a good chunk of my October, November is just helping people get that figured out. Um, I, Welcome, Chris. 
I did um, let the select board know too that there is, uh, Kristen and I had applied for a grant back in May for the digital literacy grant. It's through the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. We are waiting to hear back. Um, basically, this program is meant to help seniors get more literate using um, technology, social media, um, online portals, things of that nature. So we're just waiting to hear back to see if we got the grants. Um, if we did, we can um, basically be coordinating all of that out with Kristen as to how to get that get the program, get the classes going for our seniors so we can really kind of tailor it to the needs of our town. Um, I, I think we I think we will get the grant. I just we just are not going to know for about another month. So will this be online or in person? So the class, so the way that we did the proposal was that we had um, a group setting with like group classes and then also one-on-one -on -one classes in person, um, like whether in the person's home or in a, you know, a neutral space like the library, town offices, whatever. Um, and we're really gonna have to see, depending on the instructors that we get, you know, we can make a class like, you know, three, five people, and then if somebody needs some additional one-on-one -on -one training, we can, you know, schedule for that out as well. So, so in, it'll be a combo, yeah. What's the length of time of the course? Well, the grant, so basically the length of the grant is, um, because the grant's using ARPA funding from the federal government, we have to basically get this pretty much done by the end of, uh, I believe we got to get it done pretty much by the end of 24. And um, so we have about a year, a little over. So all the classes, all, all the money. stuff, all that money is going to be gone. Yeah. So we have to the end of 2024 to make all Correct. Berlin seniors technically literate. Correct. <laughs> technically, technologically. Technically. You're correct. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So that's where we're at. So they obviously uh, haven't met me. <laughs> Um, just to, so as of right now, um, in the fall, we are planning a, uh, basically like a general Medicare presentation. Um, we had somebody reach out to, to do that with us. And then, um, Susanna from Holiday Farm actually reached out to, to wanting to do a presentation about, um, SNAP in that a lot of the local farms are part of this program where you can basically use, if you get food stamps, you can use it at the farms to get locally fresh food. Um, a lot of the farmers markets have this. It's just a special certification they got to go through. Um, so I'm working with her to get the details going for that. Um, so when I know more, you'll know more. What's the other part, other program related to that where? Holiday farm. Holiday. What? What's the other program related to that where um, we're able to hand out certificates to people to pick yeah, up fresh farmer, food? Farmers market coupons. Yeah. Um, so mock usually lets us know um, you know, will let us know like when farmer market coupons come in and then the town usually gets designated coupons and then we can hand them out. Do we don't have any? Not yet, no. They usually, I don't think they usually come out until sometime in July anyway. Oh. So. How, does, how does that work? Anybody who asks for it or is it? It's priority seniors and low income. So any senior and anybody who is? It's, it's low income. It's, it's really, you're look, they're looking at, because again, um, it, it's meant to be a supplement for people. Right. Are in. right. So like, for example, like the Northbrook community would qualify, whether there's yeah. or not. Um, yeah. And then everybody else, it really would be income-based. Is there a screen? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they let us know what it is. Okay. Right. What was the first mm -hmm. thing general Medicare meeting just for just to have people kind of be aware of like what medicare is for those who are oh, not like presentation exactly that's what i thought you're not on medicare are you no i'm taking the notes i'm just trying to have them correct <laughs> being the secretary yes. awesome. are you yeah, you're gonna care? you're gonna uh it's gonna be a whole lot of minutes in your case karen before you're eligible for medicare oh uh, you know I'm of the age where I play the old I play the old card every now and then. You do. Yep. I can't. I never would have suspected it. I, well, hey, you know what? I'm getting old. <laughs> oh, it's all a state but, of mind, huh? 
Am I? Okay. Uh, Medicare seminar, did you already yep. oh. mention that? Yeah, it's coming up in September, in late September. No applicant for the COA, empty seat. Um, where have we put out info? Um, we have it posted online. Um, and I know that Mary was getting us a list together too for the powerhouse. Um, what we'll do is I'm planning on just posting, doing updates on Facebook. And I know that uh, Mary will be doing so as well. And then I think for next powder house, we just re alert people that, Hey, boards, committees have openings. Council does as well. Um, yeah. But, okay. if it, but if there's anybody in particular that you think may be interested in, we can, um, I can reach out to them over the summer. Well, okay. But I mean, it behooves members of the board to uh, put their beanies to work, thinking of people in town, they think would be good teammates on COA's work. You're in charge, Bob. Of what? Of Finding out. people that help us out. Mm -hmm. Well, you see- I was, I was just expecting to look up from my little iPad here and see a sea of hands saying, oh, let's get that. Like, no, huh? Get your hands out of your pockets. Come on. All right. Um, and I will, pop over, let me see. I'm not sure if I have to go there tomorrow, but I'll pop in and sign the note. How soon are you getting that off to? Uh... You will be the last signature. So once it's signed, I can confirm address and get it out. Okay. And do you have Chip Durant's number? Because he could give you the address. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I got Mary Kate's info. So I'm gonna reach out to her and just figure out where it's best to go. Yeah, okay. Yep. I'll pop over there as soon as possible. Um, review of events. Well, we kind of did that already. So, but if there's well, one of the ones you didn't mention was our co-sponsorship with Berlin Seniors of the Piano Man concert, which was mind-blowingly excellent and stupendously under-attended. That was this past Saturday, yeah. right? I many, think. I mean, it was a nice rainy day, so we weren't interrupting anybody's golf or. Uh, you know, whatever, pickleball. So I expected a bunch of people to float in and I would, mm, I'm pretty sure the count was either 18 or 19 people. And everyone came away saying, this is nuts. This was fantastic concert. How come we don't, uh, especially two or three people from Northbrook one and two said, we got, we got 40 people on each of these places. It's like, it's not impossible but people don't come out for it. I'm not, I'd really like to hear some thoughts from you all about how to, uh, aside from cattle prods and that kind of thing, how to get people in the door. I mean, this is, that was an excellent concert. So was uh, Clara Barton. That was an excellent performance. And we had 20 or 22 for that. I think it's gonna be interesting because I think you know, when we were talking about this too with grab and go, where there's going to be some people who are going to perform weekday performances versus people who are going to perform weekend appointments. Like, and you know, you guys have been capitalizing on a lot of your performances being on weekends. So people haven't had like work obligations or other things. Um, I think maybe what something, and again, like the Berlin teachers will have to talk about this, but maybe something <clears throat> that could be worthwhile is while the banners and the um, signs are great, I'm even wondering too, if there's like a postcard or something like that that could go out to them, just saying like, hey, here are all the events we have planned with like specific days and times. People might, you know, if they feel like it's almost like a personal invitation, some people may feel more inclined to come, you know, get, have that, you know, like the powder house, for example, like we have a lot of people who get their news to the powder house because it gets mailed to them. Um, some people don't, you know, don't, but a lot of people do. And I feel like if it's, if you've got a lot of people who aren't going out and about in town, they're not necessarily going to see the signs or they may not be checking online as much or so maybe, you know, and again, that's something that the seniors can discuss. Um, and a lot of seniors, I think, are just staying closer to they're home. They're just close, yeah. I mean, a lot of us don't even shop. I mean, we choose smaller places, like I said. Um, and I think that's part of it. I think a lot of people are afraid. And then when you, well, pick, you, well, know, when you think about 
this, both of these performances were in the 1870. The seats were spaced, well, in the, not this last one, it was closer because everybody says, well, COVID isn't such a big deal anymore, but the seats for the first one for uh, Clara Barton were probably a foot apart. And then the rows were three feet apart or more. So it's not like anybody's And I don't think it's 1870, like in video uh, itself. I just, I think a lot of people get hesitant about parking between Carter, Woodward, and Central, people just get hesitant. Like it's not, you know, again, especially like if people have a lot of mobility issues, like it, I think I think it's, I think it can be a challenge. So it's, you know, though, again, down the road, it's gonna just have to be kind of weighed out. I would suspect like a place that has a, you know, more flat, easily accessible parking lot, almost like the school or school. South Commons, I, I think may attract more people than, being there, but again, I, but I also know too, the quality and the higher caliber of these performances require a stage, require, you know, more of this stuff as well. So can the school be used as a stage? I don't think it so. can, it just, the thing is, is that like with the, you know, with the Berlin seniors performances, it's like there is like a, a usage fee to use the school for that. So it, again, it's gonna get weighed out, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Part of sending out postcards to, to the seniors, I mean, we can do that, but I'd certainly prefer to do it in conjunction with the COA so that, right. that we do it on the town's mailing permit and it's not $500 a postcard. Well, but again, like if the COA co-sponsors what the seniors wants to do, that's certainly something that we can discuss. I don't think that, you know, again, postcards are going to be next to nothing compared to you know the mailings of the powder house um and that is even something too again like as you guys apply for cultural council grants you know you could ask for more money to to help call you know if that's what your plan is is to you know do postcards like a one-time round of postcards with you know two or three event dates and be like save this you know um that may be you know a way to save a little bit of money that way too I will say on this last uh, concert that the that the uh, honky tonk piano player was loved the old upright in the 1870 town hall. It just really had a good sound for this kind of music. And I will say, having moved it, the thing weighs a bloody ton and it rolls like a square wheel truck. But um, Barry Yeager told me that before it was a real deal getting it from the first floor upstairs i can imagine carrying that dog up the stairs ouch yeah maybe that's why seniors walk around in the stoop is that it because they're carrying this upright piano here and there up and down the stairs anyway i'm glad we have an elevator piano sounded good audience liked it we just have to find more audience somebody suggested uh, having it at either northbrook one or northbrook two and um, presumably you get more audience. And yet I'm on the board at Northbrook One and I gotta say, it's hard to get people out of their apartments. I, I exactly. think, and the thing is too, is that if, and this is where the balancing act comes in because though Northbrook One and Northbrook Two do have a, a large you know, population that we may serve, you're also now excluding everybody else because people aren't gonna necessarily, like people who don't live there aren't gonna feel comfortable going. So that, and that's the problem. So. I I think that like the like when I get those suggestions I try to you know give that education to people of like you know for the people like unless you're gonna have like little mini concerts where you know one performer is gonna make you know two pit stops not that I would ever suggest that but you know unless it, you're gonna do something like that where you can have something that's mobile and can go around it's it's not gonna be that's not the solution I don't think. Mm. Okay, well, not to belabor that subject, we can move along and just uh, any suggestions on how to uh, entice more people to come and partake of some really good performances would be welcome. We talked about before, like offering transportation. We did. So for oh, the um, okay. for Clara Barton, we did, and then we were offering it again for hockey but we just didn't get any requests. No requests. So, um, and I couldn't just pay my driver to cut. Like I couldn't just. No, no, car. no. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the Saturday date wound up having more conflicts for people than the Sunday date. Um, the Saturday is a busy day for a lot of people. They do the errands and that kind well, of 
Yeah, but the Clara Barton was on Sunday because Saturday it turned out we thought that was the day it was going to happen and they had didn't realize we we're going there or something or other anyway they had a wedding or something going on so that was a Sunday and that was 22 people so it's not like um, people were staying away in droves and that was actually decent weather this was interesting it looked like a Noah event outside the uh, windows let's see Powderhouse News. I saw copies of it at the town offices today, but not in the mail. They were out in the mail. They, they were dropped off yesterday, so should be out by end of week. Um, Judy Christensen's brother actually came by while I was picking up mails and asked if, he, if I knew where he could get one. And I said, well, look in the lobby there. And I said, but it's probably the last one. He said, it's July, August. I mean, uh, yeah, July, August. Um. So the next issue of the Powder House is going to come out before we reconvene again, because it will be coming out um, late August. So um, I'm planning on doing a write up for the Shine, um, you know, Good. services, open yep. enrollment. I'm planning on doing a write up on Mass Health again, just having people be mindful and being aware of that. <clears throat> um, we'll do the write up again for all the board committee members that have openings. Um, but I just wasn't sure if there was anything else that we wanted to talk about to be in the next powder house. Um, I missed the person you said. Before. The shine. Ah, yes. yes. Yep. Well, among other things, who are we going to uh, focus on in terms of meet your town? Movers? Well, we have um, Victoria Doobie. She's the new library director. We can do her. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's one. And then there is a new ACO. Um, I will ask her. She's she's only kind of in and out. ACO. That sounds like a sports injury. It's a no. It's an animal control officer. Oh uh, okay. Oh so. ACO. I thought no. you said ACL. No. No. Okay. Yeah, they have a, we have a new ACO. So. Is that well? Yeah. That was a yeah. Won't we'll go into that. That's a whole other thing. That really. That change really annoyed a lot of people. Um, okay, if anybody has any inspirations, by all means, yell. Shine right up, open enrollment, October. You yeah, that's that's what we're, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, you that's good. Recipes? I mean, um, I didn't. I don't know, like, if we wanted to, uh, like. I know that like like the old town cookbooks usually have like fall recipes and stuff like yeah. that, but I mean I guess like if the council had any recipes too that we wanted to share, you know, like a Karen special or a Pat special or something like that, we could do that as well. Yeah, yeah. Lori's been using uh, recipes out of I think it might have been the bicentennial yeah. cookbook yeah. that was put out. Yeah, I don't think the recipes get old, so I mean it's but. If anybody has something new that has some uh, new legal drugs involved that would really draw people, then we could probably include those. Huh? Are you going to have any? You're going to have recipes any recipes, Bob? Some uh, some candy with some little you know tweak to them. Yeah. Probably not me. No. I'm in that witness protection program. I don't dare jeopardize that. No. Um, anybody have any other new business? Any old business, I should say. Um, oh, I do. Business. Go ahead. The, uh, the big survey. Yes. So the survey is still in its complete, it's still working towards completion. They are working to do a presentation for the town. They want to do a formal presentation to Berlin, uh, probably sometime in September. We're just trying to figure out dates. Okay, I have one question for everybody. This may sound stupid, but I put out all these signs for the uh, COA Berlin Seniors concert and I had made this little gizmo that you can put the two by three signs on with Velcro and they can be, you take that off, you can put the next concert thing up. I cannot find one of them. I know I put up three that have the signs you can stick on and take off and I can't think for the life of me where I put it. There's the one at the town office and the one in front holder? of the eight. 
Like, is it the small sign holder or the big sign holder? It's the sign holder that takes the two foot by three foot high. We had four there was of them one printed. By the first parish, and there was one at the town offices, and then there was the, the first big parish one. had the big canvas okay. one. Yeah. Okay, and then that must be the big one too at the library. Town offices had one. Had the small one. 1870 had one, and there's a third one someplace. Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe was five, five corners, corners. and yeah. I looked. Today on the oh. meals run. Nope, not there. There's huh. a Somebody pretty. Or it's still there and he doesn't know where it is. No, I would say you can. Uh, I mean, I'll keep, I'll, I can ping Fred and just have him just be like, kind of take a look out for it. But like, yeah. do you need it to take it down? It's a little weird. I mean, the signs. Just tell you that. The signs go on a form that slides over to stakes you drive into the ground yeah. so you can move it around or not or you can leave it there take off the sign you're using and the little velcro pieces are still on the on this holder and then you get the next whatever you're advertising you can you stick think, them up there with, do you think with the uh, weather over the weekend it would have blown like would it have been like not those signs okay those stakes are driven into the ground and the sign is actually tied at the bottom to keep okay. it from you have to lift it straight up to get it off the stage. Oh, 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 okay. okay. Somebody needed it. it. Someone, well, I'm going to find it sitting around town and it's not going to say what they thought they were putting on the signboard when I find it. I left one at the town offices and I took down the one in front of the 18, did I? In front of the 1870? Yeah. And I took down the stakes at First Parish Church but I left them up. I'll check with Freddie to see if it's okay. I left them up at the South Berlin Rotary. So in case anybody has anything that they want to put up, um, the stakes are there, still there. What we mounted on the one at First Parish and the, and the Rotary was uh, the big two foot by five foot um, cloth banners. So they needed three stakes, but this other thing's got two stakes and then slide the board over it and Velcro stuff to it. That's pretty weird. Okay. I'll put a low jack on the two I have remaining. Okay. All right. If you anyway, see, if you see it, we'll let you know. Absolutely. They really are. Right. Yeah, it's pretty bizarro. I, well, it is. It's funny. I put stuff out in front of my house for free. Mm -hmm. They take what's for free and they take the sun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they evidently they must need it. <laughs> And the sign says for free. So I took it and said it was for free. Yeah. I, no. I, in my mind, I've been trying to think of how I'm going to do it because I have some things. It's like you clean out a room or something and you figure people can use this stuff. I don't mind them taking it. That's what you put it there for. But then they take the damn sign. <laughs> There's just no accounting. No. Weird. Um, the only other business that I had that just to kind of give you all a heads up is so we have our durable equipment uh, wall here in the COA room. And a lot of the stuff that we're getting in is just sitting. It's not moving at all. I would say 90% of this just sits. Um, and we're still getting an influx of stuff in, though we're not getting in requests for anything out. Um, I would like to, over the summer, do an inventory and then just keep stuff, but keep less quantity of what we have. Is there any way um, we can feed it to somebody that can use it? The pro well, I mean, we people know that we have it here, but yeah. it's just the the thing is, is that like every time you go in the hospital, or a lot of times with rehabs, you know, Karen can speak to this. You know, a lot of times, like you kind of get stuff ordered for you, and then people are like, "Oh, well, this is brand new; it's done," and then they just drop it off. And I mean, it happened today. I, I, someone just dropped off something. I didn't even get a chance to, you know, vet it and let them know. Um, and it's. Like I said, it's it's not that I don't want us to have no equipment here, but I mean we have like An we have twelve walkers. We you have you know can, ten cases. Yeah, exactly. and I think if you get the inventory done before the next thing goes out. We can certainly do that, and I think what yeah. we can do too is yep. you know I I don't want to put this stuff like and take it or leave it either because some of the stuff is in okay condition, some of the stuff is not. So, um, but I I think like if we had a cap of like you know three to four of everything and then that's it. You know, with, you know I, I have some thoughts because okay. I, I frequently have people who do need them 
And I know you can go to any COA. Yeah. Like, well, well, it depends because like mo a lot of towns now are staying away from it because of like the liability. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, but I mean, if you have people, I mean, they can, they can certainly call mm -hmm. and just say like, hey, you know, like I know how to hook you up with whatever. And I can certainly keep you updated with the list if you need that. Or even, yeah. even I don't want to make work for you, but you contact any, any of the um, short-term rehabs in the area and say, hey, if you're discharging anyone yeah. to Berlin, because normally we hear from the home care agencies and I know that they've even tried that as well. And I think, you know, as you know, some of the places are willing to accept donations and then some of the places are not. Yeah, yeah. And that's Absolutely. just the... Well, you network with the other COA directors, do you not? Yeah, most of them do not deal with equipment nor do they want it. Wow. Most don't. We're one of few. So when somebody calls them and wants some stuff, they say, oh, I'm sorry, we don't deal with it. Or, or basically they what they do... Them. Yeah, they usually connect them to either like another agency, like um, like Wheat, for example, had durable medical equipment for a while. So some people get connected there. Hmm. They may have other, um, like a lot of people get connected to Bouvier, um, you know, things like that. Um, but most most senior centers and COAs don't have durable medical equipment anymore. They don't want the liability. They just don't. I had a really frustrating if, experience. If somebody, if it gets, the liability is like, if God forbid, like, somebody takes one of the equipment here yep. and something happens to them. They, they trip, they fall, they get injured. Hypothetically, like they could try to come after who loaned it to them. So that would be the account. Faulty walker. Yeah. So it's, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, so we can have a form that they sign when they take it and say, we do. And I mean, accept it most people, I'm not worried about it with most people. I'm just saying though, like we don't, if we open it up. Now, right. That's more of a lie. Right. Exactly. And like yeah. I said, we just, I would say 90% of what we have just sits. And it's, I'm not saying we don't have a stock, but we're yeah. 3,500 people. We do not need the amount of stuff that we have sitting here. We don't. The uh, really frustrating experience I had was we had that hospital bed that somebody in uh, co-housing was offering. It was turned out it was in good condition. And no, we didn't want to store it and nobody wanted it. I called every agency from here to Moscow and nobody wanted it in about a week after I took it over to the transfer station, bing, up on uh, Berlin Neighbors Connect, I just had a joint replacement surgery and would love to, you know, do you have one, a hospital bed? Ah, you gotta be kidding. And what happened there was I, I told the guys at the transfer, please just let it sit there for about a week. And then I'll let you know that next Saturday and we'll toss it in the hopper. So I came back. I hadn't found anybody. I came back and there the thing sits, still looking fine, except somebody had taken the electric motors off of it, oh, helped themselves to that and left the rest of it. So into the hopper it went. And then, as I say, two weeks later, I could really use a hospital bed. It's just weird, I think. We just, we, we do not have the storage board here, nor do I want us to be storing any large pieces of equipment. And this is this is part of the problem is that this equipment, some of the stuff is very easy to donate and very easy to like recycle, reuse and pass on and hospital beds are a big one, but oh, yeah. it is a challenge. Yeah. You, you will recall our wonderful stair climber experience. Have you ever received any monetary gratitude from the people I took all the parts to? Oh. Wonderful. No. no. Nice. Lovely. The world is full of strange people. We had a stair lift in here a while ago. It's a long story. Do we need it's one? A long stair lift, too. All right. What's this comments from the public? Um, just the general comments from the public were really more about grab and go and that okay. we're all successful. Any complaints? Only like one or two, but it wasn't even like that the food was bad. It just wasn't to their tasting. But it <laughs> But as a whole, like, I mean, people were very happy. They were happy. Like it got delivered. The meals got delivered quickly. They were happy with, you know, as a whole, like, you know, how they tasted that they were able to have extra food. Like, so, I mean, as a, as a whole, um, I was telling the ladies before we started, like, as long as like 75 to 80% of the people are happy with the meals that they get distributed. And we've never hit below that with Chef du jour. Um, I say it's a success. Are we going to do this again next year? Yeah, probably in the fall sometime. In the fall. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just on um, 
a sort of sister organization, the uh, Berlin Seniors with whom we've co-sponsored events. Sounds like there's some sort of possibility that they may be getting back to having their monthly luncheons, which prior to COVID were very popular, were always held in uh, First Parish Church. I don't know why they couldn't, if that remained a problem, I don't know why, well, I'd have to check with Health Board, why it couldn't be held in the large hall at the uh, 1870. Um, it, I sounds like the, it sounds like First Parish may be capable of willing to, able to invite us to use their lower hall again. I, I would think that the, the I think hang up would be is just making sure because again, like if those buildings don't have like a board of health license to, you know, cook, prepare foods, like then you're, I think the concern would then be like, you know, if you're gonna serve hot food, how do you keep it hot? If it's cold food, how are you keeping it cold? Like those are the questions that the board of health are gonna have. And it's, it's at the regional level, not at local level. Yeah, but it worked before. We had hot meals, we had dishwasher in the first parish church, all that but stuff. But first parish had a license then too, their license expired. That's the thing. Why did it expire? Does I it don't know, but it's not valid anymore. At least it wasn't for a while during the beginning of COVID. So they may have gotten a new one now, I don't know. I'm not okay. part of that. It, it had to do with their water supply and it had to do with their septic. And the water supply issue is supposedly being resolved by taking water from their other building across Carter and hauling it over there by buckets, pouring it in a little bit. No, that's not how they're doing it. But anyway, it sounds like hope, 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 like that may be coming back online. I mean, and like I said, I mean, um, there are a lot of companies out there like Chef Du Jour that like, if you wanted to do like catered meals every once in a while, it wouldn't be that hard to do. It's just making sure again, you know, it's just gonna yeah. be what? Berlin seniors are charging and they thought it was high. They were charging six bucks a meal. That's for three courses plus dessert, coffee, water. Pretty reasonable. Good to... very yeah, reasonable. very reasonable. Good job with all the Berlin people. No, that's no kind of... Okay, anybody have any other business? <laughs> Our next meeting is September 26th. I will bet that's a Tuesday. Correct. And at 4 p.m., do we hear any other business questions, answers? So are you all, it, taking, are you all taking this summer off? July? Yep. We voted last year to not meet in July and August. Okay. So because of that, no seniors in town are allowed to get any older for those two months. We're actually stretching their lives by two months by doing this yeah. all right i will entertain a motion to adjourn all right it's not it's been nice to see you all every month it's likewise nice chris <laughs> um do i hear a motion to adjourn i make a motion to adjourn second uh, all those in favor, Karen Schultz. Aye. Rachel Boyer. Aye. Pat Wheeler. Aye. Bob Lair, aye. Thank you all for attending, for your input, and uh, have a lovely summer. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, September. you too. Bye. See you in September. Ciao. Adios.